Welcome to Lunch and Learn, presented by Coda Bears. My name is Bill Golis. I'll be today's presenter. And today's topic is SQL maintenance plans and backups. First, we're going to have a uh, short presentation going over SQL maintenance plans. And then we will have a demonstration. All right, SQL maintenance plans, what are they? The maintenance plans are automated tasks and uh, workflows that are done on schedules, and they're defined by the SQL database administrator. Properly constructed plans can make sure that your databases are backed up regularly, they're optimized, uh, consistent. can also be set to clean house, if you will, and get rid of old backup files and transaction logs as defined by the maintenance plan. Disk space can be conserved by not only you know, deleting old files, but compressing data pages and removing empty data pages if you wish. The plans can also perform consistency checks on your data and your data pages in the database uh, to make sure things aren't damaged. And if you have damage, you can be notified of it right away. You can rebuild your indexes and you can, run, you can also run custom develop jobs as needed. We won't be covering those today though. We're going to be using the maintenance plan wizard today to show you the easy way to get things done. As you can see here, there is a number of things that the wind, that the wizard is constructed to do, and we will be using a, a many of these during the demonstration. Uh, what is a SQL Server agent? An agent is a service that executes the scheduled administrative tasks. It's not 007, but it can be licensed to kill your old backup files. Uh, the service must be enabled when installing a SQL Server, or you can enable it afterwards as well, but uh, it must be enabled for the maintenance plans to operate. Uh, within the agent, you can create a SQL operator. And an operator is just, it defines the contact information for an individual such that they can be sent information on the maintenance plans and backups via email. So, for an agent, you should, should create an operator to enable the receipt of informational email as to the job status from your SQL agent. Uh, you can get automatic reports to the operator by email of completed, failed, or successful jobs. We recommend that you get the reports of completed jobs. Uh, you will get a lot of reports, uh, but if you do set up your system to just report failed or successful jobs if something goes completely sideways and the a, a jobs did not get to the point where they actually fail or succeed you won't get any reports at all therefore when you use the completed jobs it's a more robust system when as soon as you stop getting those emails you know something has gone wrong we're going to talk a little bit about manual database backups as well a manual backup for a SQL database is typically just a one-time run as needed. can be used to capture your database if you're going to do a move, copy, or restore to another location or to um, or have a copy to revert back to if you're performing some kind of a, of a, of a fix or a maintenance task that may go to a place that you don't want it to. And if that happens, you can restore back to your, to your one-time backup. When you're doing a manual, you have to set your parameters and location manually uh, and it's simply done from a right click from a database on the object explorers when you're running SQL uh, management studio and then you select a full backup as your type and a copy only which means that the uh, SQL will not associate this particular backup with other backup sets and hence it, it, it will be a standalone copy if you will you select your database as the component that you want to back up choose your destination and then you choose your media location typically it will be to a disk and then you can and you should verify the backup and reliability section but uh, today we we won't do that to save time during our demonstration then you name your backup set you click OK to kick it off and then uh, once you're done you're going to be left with a .bak file that can be used to restore the database to any SQL Server location or instance. And then uh, restoring from manual is a s simple process as well. It's uh, you just right click on the database's folder in your object explorer and choose restore. 
and then at that point you select your device as a source so you can choose that file that, that we just created select that file select your destination database and if you're going to make that restore to a brand new database you have to freehand type in the name that you want and then you go ahead and we'll leave the file pages as they are and the options as they are if we're creating a new database and then we click OK to restore so now we are going to go and we are going to do a demonstration of said processes first we're going to uh, do a manual backup of one of our databases you see here we're in SQL Server a Management Studio and uh, here's our databases here we are going to take one of the existing databases right click on it choose tasks and then backup from our backup we are going to uh, you see we selected a full backup it's going to be a copy only as I mentioned and we are going to just back up the, the uh, database and we're going to back up to disk and we're going to put in a new location to back up to so we're going to remove the old one that happens to be there because there was already a, a backup for this particular uh, database and we're going to add a new backup location and we're going to go to that default there and we're going to call it lunch dot bak before I lunch and learn I'm say okay there as we discussed our media options uh, since we are not using a existing backup set uh, these won't really matter because we're not going to be appending or overwriting but we can just leave it as it is uh, here, here's where we would check the verify uh, typically but we're going to save time by not doing that today and for our options we're going to and for the backup set which won't really matter later because this is going to be our only one here we're also going to call this lunch and we're not going to set it to expire and we're going to go ahead and we're going to run it now you see that quickly expo or, uh, exported that a backup file if we go look here at our default location which was in the SQL backup we should see here one called lunch.bak and there it is that is the backup of this uh, MFG sys 803 file that we just made so that is done now we are going to go and we are going to uh, restore a new database from that backup and then we're going to use that particular database to create a maintenance plan for it. to restore start from your databases folder here in the object explorer right click on it and choose restore database when we come back to the uh, restore uh, we have to select our source database which is going to be the one that we uh, just saved and that's going to be on our device not an existing database so we're going to need to go and browse to that device which is our file we're going to add here we're going to locate it you see it's the lunch.bak the path will populate and then we say okay so that is where we are going to want to get our backup from our destination here you'll see it has all of the existing databases but we don't want to restore to there we want to restore to a brand new database that we're going to call lunch and learn so you can freehand type in there and this will create a new database that's our general for our files we don't need to uh, this is all going to go to the default we're going to create uh, our new files in the default SQL location and for our options uh, we're going to say overwrite even though there, there shouldn't be anything in there and we should be good to go. We're going to say OK. It should be restoring to a new database called Lunch and Learn from our uh, backup, which was called lunch.bak. Say OK here. And notice here, there's our new database, Lunch and Learn. And it all looks good indeed. So now we're going to create a SQL maintenance plan. SQL maintenance plans are created from the management, a node of the Object Explorer. And then from here where it says maintenance plans, we're going to right click on maintenance plan and we're going to say maintenance plan wizard and we're ready to go click next here and this is going to be our lunch plan and it's going to be our lunch daily we're going to do one for daily and one for weekly to in today's examples this will be our daily this is going to be scheduled so we need to create the schedule it's going to be a single schedule for the entire plan and we're going to say change here to create a new schedule Okay, this is going to be recurring. We're going to make it, like we said, daily. And we're going to go every day. And we're going to do this at, uh, let's say, 1 a.m. 
you always want to choose a time when the database is going to be uh, not under heavy use if you're going to be backing up and such. And we're going to leave our duration uh, to go with no end date. We're going to say OK here. So now we have our, our schedule set up every day at 1 a.m. Okay. So next here. Now what we want to do on the daily, we're just going to do full backup on the daily. We're going to go forward here. Then that looks good. We're going to say next. And now we need to select where we're going to be doing this to. Uh, we see here what database do we want. We're just going to be doing the lunch and learn today. Uh, so we could select all our databases, which typically uh, we would, but today's we're just going to go with the one that we have here. Let's say OK. It's going to back up to disk. Where do we want that backed up at? We're going to put it right to our SQL backup here, which is the default location. Now, typically, you would want to have this backed up uh, to a different disk eventually or, or to the cloud because the, the typical SQL default backup is going to be on the same disk platters or disks as your databases. And if the server and disk were to fail, then you lose your backups as well. Uh, most of, it is certainly fast as a backup to the same to the same platter here, but typically what we would do is back this up onto the local disk first, and then from there, you know, via a, a script or another backup uh, program, we would you know copy that backup either to a network attached storage device or to a cloud uh, storage. So, you know, so we would have the uh, backup on a separate disk and perhaps even offsite. But for today, we're just going to go right to here. The extension is going to be BAK. We want to create a subdirectory for each database. And that looks good. We're going to go to our options here. And that's all good. We're not going to encrypt or we're not going to set it to expire at this point. I'm going to say next. And it says it's ready to go. We do not want to write a report. We would typically have the report emailed to an individual. But today, we're not going to do that. And that individual would have to be a SQL operator, as we discussed. And then here it will show your maintenance plan. So, and we have our, our description, we have our schedule, we have what it's going to do, just a full backup to the one database, a full and destination, and we're going to say finish. Then it's going to go through and uh, create that maintenance plan. Everything here is, is, is successful, so we should be good. Then when we're looking at our maintenance plans here, we're going to see lunch daily. And to test it, we can just right-click and say execute. Now, right now, that is running. It should be creating a full backup of our lunch and learn database after the default location, and it should create a subfolder. It's also called lunch and learn because that's the name of the database. It says it's a success. Let's go have a look here and see if we see it. Sure enough, lunch and learn, and within there, there is uh, full backups from uh, from today, eight seventeen. All right, excellent. So we've created a daily plan. Let's now create a weekly plan for our new database. Again, we're going to right click. We're going to choose maintenance plan wizard from the maintenance plans okay this one is going to be lunch weekly we need to set a schedule here again we're going to choose change to get that schedule and we're going to say weekly we want to choose what day may hey, a, a sunday is typically a good night to run this you want to make sure you have plenty of time to run these so I'm assuming that we're closed on Sunday. Let's even set this up to run at, say, 6 p.m. on Sunday. That way it has, you know, all the way till the following morning, typically, Monday morning when when transactions were to start happening. Start date's going to be today, and we're going to be good there. Let's say OK. And then it's going to show us here every week, Sunday at 6 p.m., Okay, we're in good shape. Let's, let's go next. Now, what do we want to do on a weekly basis? Well, we want to check our integrity. We want to rebuild our index. We're going to update our stats. We're going to clean up history. We're going to back up our, our database full. 
and transaction logs, and we're going to also create a, a maintenance uh, cleanup task. Now, you might say, why not do everything? Uh, things like shrink your database or reorganize. There could be uh, things, for instance, with shrink where the uh, database is expanding for a reason because you're running some kind of a process, and you may find yourself shrinking it and then it growing again right away because because you shrunk what it actually needs. If you find that you want to shrink your database, you should find out why it's growing before you shrink it. Uh, we don't have an, a SQL Server agent jobs, anything that we created. We're going to do a full backup and a transaction log. No reason for a differential here on a weekly basis. That should be good. Uh, and we'll go next. This shows us what we have selected. It all looks good. We'll go next again. And then it's going to say what databases do we want to perform these actions on. We're going to just select our lunch and learn today. And move forward. Include our indexes. And then again, each of the tasks is going to ask us which, which database that it needs to be on. And that's all good for our faults there. Date maintenance statistics. We are going to go with, again, our lunch and learn. And we're going to do all statistics and a full scan because we have time for it on Sunday night. Okay, history cleanup. This is just the things that SQL stores from the history, not your old files. This is the history text files of what the, the maintenance uh, stuff has, has been done. Uh, typically, you know, we like to re remove everything older than, say, I'm going to say two weeks today, uh, depending on how much disk space you have and how much need you have to have these records. You can make that decision. Our full backups, we're going to, again, choose just the Lunch and Learn DB. We're going to back up to our default. So our destination here should be set up already. Again, remember to create subdirector for each database, and it's going to be a dot bak for these. And our options here, we're going to, not going to set it to expire. Default settings everywhere. We should be good. Our transaction log, again, same thing, with the single database. What you learn, and we're going to back up to disk. Our destination should again be the default. We're going to go up to our subdirectories, and our options are all fine. Finally, the maintenance cleanup task. Now, this is important because this is what gets rid of your old backup or transaction logs files that you're creating each week from this process. Uh, so we're going to get rid of backup files here, okay? And we're going to do it on BAKs. So this is just going to uh, delete a backup file older than two weeks. And we want to include our first level subfolders. Now, remember, we did a, a full backup and a transaction log as well. So this is just going to get rid of the backups. We need to make a separate cleanup task on this uh, particular maintenance plan for the TRN files as well to make sure that we're cleaning those up. Again, we're not going to do a report. We typically would do an email, but today we won't. And now you'll see a complete listing of what your plan is and all your uh, that you have there. And we're going to say finish because I believe we're all correct. It's going to set it up. Now, just to show you how this displays as well from within, you know, from within the Object Explorer here. If you were to go select this weekly plan, and you said modify, it will show us over here all of the, the actions that it's going to perform and in the order that it's going to do them. Check our DB integrity. Rebuild our index, update stats, clean up history, do the backups, both full and transaction log, and then a maintenance cleanup task here. This is, again, this one's just going to do our uh, BAKs. We would want to put an additional uh, here for a transaction log. And then once this is here, you can, of course, execute this if, if you wanted to do it, you know, to test it. Is always a good idea, but you might want to be careful if you are in a production environment to not run this, you know, during production hours because uh, these tasks can definitely put a large strain on your server and consume resources that will slow your system to a crawl. And that, in a nutshell, is uh, SQL maintenance plans. Typically, you might set up also a 
hourly plan where you might just get transaction logs on the hour depending on how much tolerance you have for data loss and how how fast your server is and how much disk space you have it's all decided you know based on what your individual needs are and your individual resources are as well so that is what we had today i thank you very much for attending coda bears launch and learn